All right, guys, we're living in some very, very strange times right now, but I'm here to bring some normalcy into your life. Going to do a recap video for stage three, filming stage three of the Bass Pro Tour in East Texas. Please join me. We're going we're gonna to have a great time. Everything's going to be very normal. Let's get loaded. Okay, so where to start on this, uh, this recap video? I'm going to go through the whole tournament. Interestingly enough, I missed the first two days of the Bass Pro Tour because I was sick. I had diarrhea and a fever. Now, I had just gotten back from Costa Rica and I got a, a fever and diarrhea, feeling a little nauseous, no cough. But uh, I had to uh, get better, and then once I got uh, fully recovered, I flew down to Dallas, and then um, I, I filmed, let's see, it would have been, let me, I got my notes here, it would have been, I started day three of the event. So day three was Group A elimination round of the Bass Pro Tour Stage 3. Um, so. All of this stuff was kind of hanging, e even then, which was, I don't know, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago now. Uh, things were just kind of, the, the whole coronavirus thing was just kind of hanging over everybody's head. It was like dark cloud, and um, uh, I don't think I had the coronavirus. I never had a cough, um, but it, it, was, it was strange. It was strange the whole week filming for Major League Fishing, but I'll, I'll go ahead and go through this. So I got better, got on a plane, filmed, and the first, uh, first day that I was filming, again, I missed the first two days, so I filmed day three, group A elimination round. First thing I wanna tell you about, so I went to a Walmart, and that was a strange thing because there was a lot of stuff um, not available at Walmart. So when I go to Walmart for these Bass Pro Tour events, I stock up on um, a, some breakfast items and some lunch items for the boat. So I go to a Walmart or something like a Walmart to get all those items before I start filming for the week um, or for the event. So one of the things too, when you're filming these Bass Pro Tour events, which are different than the cup events, on the cup events, we're all film, uh, filming out of the same boat, which is like a nitro, um, it's an 18 footer. Now I think we're gonna be going to 19 footers, but um, the center uh, seat, we actually have a center seat. And it's a nice comfortable seat. I don't have to worry about not having a seat. Well, in these Bass Pro Tour events, I'm in the uh, another angler's boat. So every time I'm in a, a different boat, never know what boat I'm gonna be in. So I need to provide a, uh, uh, I need to have a seat, you know, and there's been a few times, well, all of the events I've shot, all of the Bass Pro Tour events I've shot so far, I've not had a seat. And if you're in rough water, that can be, uh, that can, it can be really hard on your ass, just saying. So I've wised up, I went to, uh, to, to Walmart and I got myself a seat and you look at this thing, you go, man, that's a real big seat, Greg. But it's surprisingly light. Look at that. It's got like good back support, very padded. And so that thing goes into a big duffel bag. And like I said, it's light, surprisingly light. I can break it down real easily. And I'm not a pain in the ass to the, to the fishermen. Everything's just easily uh, moved out of the way. I if I have to, so that, I just wanted to show that to you. So I was with Timmy Horton for most of the day, and what's interesting is that we're in the midst of like this trolling motor battle. Like there's a new trolling motor, motor war, war going on. So you used to only have Motor Guide and Minn Kota. And Motor Guide in the bass world used to be kind of the top dog. And then Minn Kota took over, and then Motor Guide, I don't know what the hell Motor Guide's thinking. They've kind of just, who knows what's happened with them. But they've really fallen off the face of the planet in many respects. 
So you have Minn Kota that's really been kicking everybody's ass. I should ever, shouldn't say everybody. There's only been two trolling motors, Minn Kota and Motor Guide. They've been kicking Min Motor Guide's ass. All right. So now, though, we have um, Garmin that's come out with a new trolling motor that looks really, it, it looks great. I'm liking the Garmin uh, a lot. Lowrance now has come out with a, a trolling motor. And also PowerPole is coming out with a trolling motor. Hearing a lot of cool things about the PowerPole uh, trolling motor that's going to be coming out. So now you have this trolling motor, a real market for trolling motors. And Motor Guide has just been just falling by the wayside. Well, they just came out with a new trolling motor called the, the, um, the Motor Guide Tour. And or to, Motor Guide Tour Pro, I think is the name of it. And the, what I understand about this trolling motor is that the foot pedal is much like a cable steer foot pedal. It feels much more like a cable steer. It actually even might be a cable steer. So it's more responsive, uh, more responsive, quicker feeling, just like the old days. And it also has spot lock on it, which is supposed to be, um, you know, the fact that it feels like a real uh, cable foot control, but also having um, the spot lock is supposed to be what separates this trolling motor from everybody else. But I got to tell you, there's a few guys using this trolling motor now. The thing is the most god awful looking trolling motor I've ever seen in my life. It is so ugly. Um, if you look right down at it, you know, um, like right, right down at it, no problem. But if you look from the side, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's hideous. The head of it is so big. It's so big. And I heard someone, it might have been JT Kenny, say that it, it looks like Darth Vader or Darth Vader's helmet. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good way to, just, uh, to describe it. It's, it's hideous. So Motor Guide, I don't know what the hell you're, you're thinking. So I thought I'd just share that with you. Uh, da, 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 da. But it also has a really thick shaft. I put that in there. I thought that was important to, to tell you about. Okay, so I moved to Randall Tharp in like the last uh, 30 minutes. And um, I was really, when, when you're moving to someone, and Randall's a pretty intense fisherman. He's, he's good to work with, but... Um, I know he's pretty intense and moving to with only 30 minutes to go and he was right on the bubble if I'm not mistaken yeah he was right on the bubble so um, getting in with the boat uh, you know making a transfer from the camera boat to an angler boat is really pretty high stress and luckily we were able to do it no issues um, it kills me. I don't remember if Randall made it or not. I, it, I don't have those notes there, so <laughs> you might have to. But my point is, um, it's, it's, it's always a stressful thing. I wish I could. This is going way back. I didn't take very good notes, so I apologize. Um, okay, so, but what was cool is, I'm uh, just to kind of wrap up this, uh, this first day, okay? Sorry I can't tell you. I don't think, Timmy, I'm... I'm I don't think they made it in, and in that illumination round. I could be wrong. Um, pretty sure Timmy didn't make it. Timmy Horton didn't make it. And I don't believe Randall did it either. I could be wrong there. But anyway, um, I'm hearing that people are really loving the two pound minimum. Instead of one pound, like last year, now it's two pounds. It's variable though, that might change. They might move it in some fisheries, they might you know, it might be um, less. Two pounds sounds like it's, it's the deal, though, in the fisheries that we've been going to. So hearing a lot of good things, sounds like the anglers are really happy with the two-pound minimum. It sounds like the fans are really happy with the two-pound minimum. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, the other thing, and I want to get back to the trolley motor thing, too, because... Um, I, at the end of that day, I was hearing more about this new power pole trolling motor coming out. But I'm also hearing that bass 
maybe, you know, and this is just, ru uh, you know, rumors. So take this for whatever, however you want. But Bass, B-A-S-S, -S, might be in tough shape. Um, they've been canceling events, and I know that the, with, the, with the pandemic going on, this was before the pandemic really hit full, full, full force, but they were canceling some events, and some anglers were like, why are you canceling these events? One of them was, was related to a, like flooding, and supposedly the flooding wasn't that bad. The Classic was bad. There was low turnout at the Classic. Um, some people thinking maybe Bass isn't in the greatest shape right now. I don't know. Um, let's get back to the trolling motor. So I'm hearing, I've heard now from a few pros, okay, that this new trolling motor by PowerPole that's coming out, and I hate this term because it's overused so much, it's going to be a game changer. But I keep on hearing about it, and I know power, pole, power poles to me are the best shallow water anchor, or the best design. Uh, they're just a very good uh, shallow water anchor, made very well. And supposedly, power pole is a company that's just super dialed in. They take their time with getting stuff right, and they're taking their time with this trolling motor that's going to be coming out, and it's supposed to be amazing. So what I've heard is, uh, it's got a lot more power, and it's a lot less power draw. And the head on it, supposedly, is supposed to be super small. So, really excited to see this thing coming out. So I wanted to share that with you. That was the first day filming. Uh, let's see, day four now. Day four would have been, let's see, that would have been the Group B elimination round. So. Only the top 20 guys move on in this uh, day. So I was with Justin Atkins. Justin Atkins, I've never filmed with Justin before. Um, impressive sight fisherman. Very, very good sight fisherman. That's all he was doing when I was with him. He, um, so when 30 minutes before the tournament actually started, so we started set, what time did we start? We start at 9.30. That's the other thing, too. One of the reasons why I didn't film every day is because we were, having, so we were starting at 9.30, so they let us out 9.30, and then lines in was at 10 o'clock. But the tournament didn't stop until 6. So, and then we had to drive quite a ways to get to the launch ramp and then get back to the hotel. So I wasn't getting back to my hotel room until late. And plus, with all the, the virus stuff going on, I felt it was important to use my cell phone to call my uh, loved ones instead of make videos for you guys. So I apologize. Um, OK. So we start at 9.30. He's fishing right near the launch ramp. So he finds these cove, or he, he, we get into this cove, and Justin is looking for some fish that he's seen in practice or even, even the day, like the first day of competition, um, but also in practice, I think, too. So he, he, the first three fish that he saw during, you know, he, he, before lines in, when the lines in was declared, he went to those three fish and he caught all three of those fish. And one of those fish was an eight pounder. And um, the amazing thing about this eight pounder, I'm looking at my notes, as you can tell, the amazing thing about this eight pounder was that he broke this fish off. So he, he, he pitched in there, saw the fish pitched in there, it took it and he broke off, broke the line on this fish. So um, what's amazing is it went back to it. I can't remember how long he waited until he went back to it, but it wasn't that long. Less than an hour, I'd say. Let's see if I have that in there. Yeah, it, it wasn't that long. He went back to that fish, ate it again. It's a spawning fish, so that makes it a little bit different. Um, they're much more aggressive. But anyway, it's still pretty remarkable. The fish eats it a second time, sets the hook, actually gets his fish in. It's an eight pounder. So that was, uh, that was pretty awesome. And he looked for bedding fish all day, um, ended up, in second place going into the knockout round. So Justin had a really good tournament. Um, 
but it is strange. There was a, a cloud kind of hanging over this whole event, this whole time. You know, there's so many unknowns. You know, the whole time I'm filming, I'm like, what kind of world are we living in? What kind of news is there going to be when I get off the boat? All the anglers, you know, we're always, we, we typically would shake hands. No, we're, we're you know, I'm, I'm fist bumping or just doing like the, the elbow thing to greet anglers. Um, and there's just so many unknowns. Like we, we don't, you know, all the camera guys, all the anglers, all the boat officials are like, well, are any of these events going to be canceled? So it was a very strange, uh, very strange time. Okay, so yeah, um, so day five, which is, let's see here, day five, that would be the knockout round. I was paired with Jacob Poroznik, never worked with Jacob before, and Jacob is really well known for sight fishing. He's a great sight fisherman. He caught two while I was with him, and one of the things, so we're on Lake Fork, okay, in East Texas, and Lake Fork is, you know, it's, it's legendary, but it also gets a lot of pressure. And also the fact that there was a lot of people not at work because of the, the, the pandemic. So there was probably more boat pressure on, on the lake than there typically is. And these anglers, Jacob Prosnick was one of them, were constantly running into local anglers fishing, you know. And a lot of anglers were getting frustrated and it's, it's understandable. I mean, what other sport do you know of that you know, you have to, I mean, the playing field has people uh, on it that are just fishing for fun, but are, you know, possibly um, uh, affecting how you play, how you play your professional sport. And so it's, it's just, it's a crazy dynamic to witness it and you see it how it affects anglers. You know, can you imagine like you're excited to get into this cove you know, you've spotted some bedding fish in this cove, you know there's some big ones in there, and then there's a number of local anglers that are already there, you know, and you're trying to win $100,000. So that's a, that's a really interesting dynamic filming these events when you get a lot of, you, go, you know, you get on a fishery that's got a lot of pressure. Um, Okay, so I moved to Brian Thrift for the last period, and I've ne never worked with Brian before, but I was really, really looking forward to working with Brian because I think he's one of the, the, the great anglers right now. And, um, I mean, his, his record kind of speaks for itself. And um, first thing I notice is that he's got his rods, he's got, I I'm kind of remember how many I counted. I think I counted... I think I counted, let's see, 14, I think I caught in 17 rods. He had 14 rods up front, so seven on the, on the starboard, seven, excuse me, seven on the starboard bow, seven on the port bow. I don't know if that's the right term. Um, and then he had, and then he had, how many more did he have? He had five, I think five, four or five more um, down where the, the uh, passenger seat is. You know what I'm saying? down here where the passenger sits um, and almost like every conceivable bass fishing technique I mean I know there's a million bass fishing techniques but he had just about every technique every lure th that you would want out in the springtime you know I mean everything so he could just go plunk plunk and it was very well organized that's kind of the first thing I noticed um, He's an incredibly versatile fisherman. He can fish any style. And um, yeah, I, I, that was the first thing I've noticed. I, I'll have to, to film with him more to kind of get a more of a sense of what kind of angler he is. Um, he's, he's laid back, you know. I, he, I can tell he's, he's nervous in some ways. Like he gets anxious, like, um, you know, because he was right on the bubble of making it. And so I could see that he was saying, but his fishing style didn't, he, he seemed very cool, calm, and collected with his fishing style. I could see that his hand was shaking a little bit, but how he fished, you know, he just kind of, you know, he didn't get too worked up, didn't fish too fast, which is pretty cool to see. Um, but was, what was awesome is that 
I remember I texted uh, one of the producers. We're, we're supposed to do interviews with the anglers after the event, okay? Uh, because what's interesting, what's cool about our cameras is that we have an encoder on the back of our cameras that allows us to send a live signal out using cell phone technology, essentially. All right, so it's like I have a big cell phone uh, on my back with, you know, AT&T, Verizon, all of the different carriers. Um, so I'm basically looking, or the, the encoder is looking for the best signal around and using that signal to send out. And then Tulsa, Oklahoma is where they're directing the show. They get my signal. I can also hear what's going on. But they, what they wanted is they wanted... Um, they wanted an interview with the anglers after and that they then after the live show like the official live show was done with anglers you know fishing once that was done they would then take my interview of the angler and then put that into like the post game kind of show so i do a post game wrap up but i was i asked the producer i said it was uh, brian was out of the bubble so he was out he was looking there was only like 30 minutes left not many uh, not much time left and it was looking like he wasn't going to make it into the top 20 cut. So I texted the producer, do you still want an interview if Brian doesn't make it in the cut? Because I was really thinking he wasn't going to make it. He was out, you know, I think, um, a, you know, 10 or so pounds, something like that. But um, I got a response back, yes, still want an interview. So here I am thinking Brian is probably not going to make it, right? Well... He's, I think he was throwing a, no, no, no. He was using a, like a flipping tube. Not a lot of people throw a flipping tube anymore. He was using a, uh, a Texas rigged flipping tube, black flipping tube, and just kind of like casting it blindly. Wasn't looking for, for sight, you know, for bedding fish. Was just casting it blindly along a flat. There was kind of a bull rush sticking up. Makes a cast and hooks into a giant. And it ended up being nine pounds, eight ounces, and it moved him into the cut and into the championship. He caught another one. I think he caught like a two pounder or something. Um, but he made it into the championship is my point. Um, and it was, it was really, really kind of uh, down to the wire. And I mean, it was pretty cool to see. And whenever you see a big, you know, when, when filming a big fish like that is almost, almost as good as catching the fish. I mean, maybe not, it's not almost as good, but it's still pretty good. I shouldn't even say it's not almost as good. It's, it's good. Um, you get what I'm saying. So day six, last day, we were at Lake Athens and kept on hearing the whole time I was, you know, down there. Oh, we're going to Lake Athens. This is going to be like Jurassic Park, the Texas, uh, you know, fisheries. They manage this as a trophy, trophy fishery. It's smaller full of big, big largemouth, you know, Florida strain largemouth. So man, I was like, my hopes were very high. Paired up with Justin Atkins again. And so Justin made it into the top 10. It's only the top 10 that fish on this final championship day. What was just absolutely shocking was how slow it was. No one was expecting that it was gonna be slow. And it was slow. The, there was, you know, um, Mark Daniels Jr. was catching them relatively good and he was up there in the standings, but the fishing was really pretty bad. And that's, I mean, that's fishing. You go anywhere, you never know what you're going to experience. You could be on the best body of water and weather, who knows, all kinds of things can play a factor to it absolutely sucking. And that's what was happening to Lake Athens. It was sucking. And, um, and here, you know, I'm listening to the control room in my right ear, and they're just as surprised as I am because everybody wants an exciting show, you know. And it's just, I mean, the first two periods pretty much, you know, were just very, very slow. That started to change towards the end of the second period. And I'm with Justin Atkins, and he tells me that he sees this big fish. He kind of saw it tailing. Um, it went down and investigated his bait, I think, but then he, and then, it, then he lost track of it. He kept on pitching to it. 
And then he sees it again and it goes down. And this is a giant. He said it's like an eight pounder, he said. He goes down, he, he sees the fish go down to his jig, thunk, and he sets the hook. And my whole thing is, well, I'm there to document. I mean, I, I know I used to be absolutely addicted to the Bassmasters way back in the day on the Nashville Network. I know what I like to see in a shot. I feel like this is what fishermen want to see. Um, but I, ideally, I wish I would have been able to you know, see the, the, where Justin was pitching, but I didn't have a wide enough angle to do that. So what I do is I just push in tight to him on a medium shot, so which is basically the top of the head to the, the waist. And I start pushing into him because I know I can't see him pitching to the, this bass. So I just start pushing into him. And when I'm pushing into him, he sets the hook on this absolutely giant fish. And he sets the hook. The fish starts coming around to the left. So I start zooming out wide because I want to see if that fish starts, starts coming up. I want to be able to get that, that you know, head shake and just the wallowing of a giant fish, you know? That's what, why we watch this stuff. So I zoom out and here comes this fish. And this fish just, it comes, it's like a submarine. It sounds so stupid, but honestly, it's like a, a little mini sub surfacing. And it just, it just goes, it just, it was just, it was so big and fat that it just couldn't really like move too much. But it just went, oh, and it's like breached the surface and just, and it opens its mouth and here comes that jig right out. And, and so Justin drops to the, to the floor and punches the floor. And I'm like, you know, I would have preferred that he caught that fish. But at the same time, I'm like, that is an awesome sporting you know, it's the agony of defeat. That's a sporting moment. That's a sports moment. You know, it's not always glory. It's, it's the agony of defeat. There it was. I captured it. They replayed it. Uh, Marty Stone was talking about it. It was the biggest fish he's ever seen in competition or ever on video. 11-pounder. Um, I've caught an 11-pounder before. Absolutely looked like an 11-pounder. I kind of cheated, though. I, I caught it in Mexico, so it's kind of not real, you know what I mean? But it was a giant. I would say it, it definitely could have been 11 pounds. It was a giant. But after that happened, there wasn't really, I mean, the, the light level was getting a little bit lower. Um, seeing how long I've been talking here. I just talk, talk, talk. I apologize. Um, you know, it was getting later in the day, so the light level was a little bit lower, but there wasn't anything like weather-wise really that changed anything that I noticed. But after that, the day started picking up. And so, end of second period, going into the last period, it was a completely different lake. I mean, a completely different lake. They were popping. I mean, the fish were on fire. They're biting throughout the lake. And uh, I've always found that interesting. You know, what is that trigger that makes the whole lake just turn on? And you see it with Major League Fishing. You see it. You you. A lake can be absolutely dead, and then all of a sudden there's these flurries, bloop, you know, lake wide. And so, to me, I think there's a lot going on that we've never really thought about, you know, in the fish, in the bass fishing world. I think it's probably lunar, uh, solar lunar tables. I think people should probably start paying more attention to those because I think major league fishing is kind of proven that there's something going on there. Um, so the odd if you watch the odd defo if you watch the um the, the last period the last hour um it was something else odd had like a 15 pound deficit and he found a school of just the the glory hole um a school of just good large mouth he catches a nine pounder out of this school and he rockets into first place overtakes Mark Daniels Jr. Honestly, I thought Mark had it wrapped up. I mean, I thought no one was going to touch him. 
and that's just the excitement of Major League Fishing. You just didn't have this before in bass fishing. Congratulations to Ott. When you're watching this, I'm listening to the director and the assistant directors. I'm, I'm hearing how this uh, live show is being put together in my right ear. I have a, an earpiece, you know, an earbud, and it connects to the encoder of my camera. And you guys, you, <laughs> if you knew how difficult it was for those guys to figure out how to manage telling the story, the overall story of, you know, Ott and catch fish catches and overtaking Mark Daniels and still like being able to, to put a show together with so much chaos. Ott was catching them so quickly. It was absolute bonkers in the studio, in the truck, them trying to direct this show and get all the fish catches in and, and um, I, I really, I had a great appreciation of those guys already, but even more so after what they had to do, juggling everything to pull that off. Um, it's not easy to do a live fishing, you know, fishing show. I mean, those guys are doing this for eight hours. You name another sport where they're doing six days straight for eight hours a day. The commentators, the directors, you know, I'll even toot our, my own horn here, the camera guys. Um, it's really, really something cool to be a part of. So I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of this team. But um, especially with all the stuff going down, we pulled it off even with, with all the unknowns going on with the uh, COVID-19. So I, it, was, um, it, was, it was good to, uh, to have gotten that tournament in. And uh, yeah. We're just a, a great big family and we're all concerned about one another and, and uh, we hope we can just keep on doing this. But a lot of things up in the air. Um, I don't know whether stage four or stage five is going to be happening. If it, you know, I haven't heard anything yet. Fingers crossed. Um, but that's kind of what's been going on in my world. I'm going to try to do more videos while I'm sequestered here in my house. Uh, if you guys have any ideas for videos, I'd love to hear them. I'm going to try to. The crazy thing about Minnesota is that I can't fish for smallmouth right now. Um, I'm right by the Mississippi River. Unfortunately, I can't fish for smallmouth right now because the walleye season is close and they try to protect the walleyes. They don't want guys going out and saying that they're fishing for bass when they're actually fishing for walleye. So that's why they won't allow me to fish for smallmouth right now. Really drives me crazy. So I'm thinking I'll do maybe some rough fish stuff. I like catching it, uh, anything. So you guys have any ideas? The ice is, you know, I live on a little lake. Um, the ice out here is, I don't like sketchy ice and late ice. I'm not, uh, I don't know. Um, and plus it's warming up. I'll probably not be doing any ice fishing this year, which is really lame, but probably going to be doing some rough fishing up until I can, I can fish for a small mouth, but maybe do some more videos like this. I got some commentary stuff I'm, I'm thinking about doing. Definitely going to have a lot of time on my hands, but thanks for watching. And if you like what we're doing here at Angling Uploaded, please subscribe. Please subscribe. It's the best way to support. I know I say this every time, but it is the best way to support us. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Subscribe. Be safe out there, guys.